ICC ranked number two T20 bowler in the world, Mr. Samuel Badri. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And uh, Samuel, you've been, uh, this is your second trip to the US Open. Last time you were around, you were number one T20 bowler in the world, and you were playing here at Broward County against some of the local talent. How was the feeling from a professional perspective in the level of competition that you experienced here? You know, sometimes when you hear about cricket in the US, you don't really take it uh, seriously. But when I came here and I experienced it myself, um, the level of the competition was, was much greater than I expected. And, um, and this year, looking at the names of the players who are participating in uh, you know, expected a real competitive tournament, it's really unfortunate that the rain uh, actually fell and put a damp on the tournament. But uh, like I say, cricket in the US has a lot of potential and there's a lot of talent out here and I'm really looking forward to see how it goes in the next couple of years. Great. Um, let's go back into uh, memory lane a little bit. Who are your, some of the great heroes in the West Indies that you kind of grew up watching, idealizing, and modeling your own cricketing skills after? Uh, to be honest, uh, in terms of, of who I uh, modeled, it would be uh, Pakistani Shahid Afridi. But when I was growing up, you know, Brian Lara, obviously the greatest batsman, in my opinion, who've ever played the game. Um, you looked at him and we looked at all the talent that came to the West Indies. And at, when I was a youngster, we were the dominant team. It's a bit unfortunate now that we, we are not doing as well as we ought to, but I suppose uh, it's a cycle and, and hopefully um, very soon things can change for the West Indies cricket team and the West Indies public in terms of us getting back at the top of the world game. But like I say, everything takes time and I think we're getting there slowly, but, um, but surely. Awesome, yes, and uh, West Indies is a great run. I think uh, the T20 brand of cricket is kind of tailor-made for the uh, West Indies players and the type of cricket that West Indies has always played, even in the past with the ferocious, nice, fast bowling, the spinners, the accelerated batsmen. You won a World Cup uh, a couple of years ago. There, You were semi-finalist in the last T20. What are the plans for the next T20 World Cup that's scheduled for uh, happening in India, and are you going to be part of that team? Uh, like you mentioned, I think uh, T20 is still limit for us. We're aggressive uh, type of cricketers. We play the game you know, in a fast-paced manner. Uh, that was indeed my greatest cricketing moment, having been part of that successful T20 World Cup team in 2012 in Sri Lanka. Uh, we wanted to defend it, obviously, in 2014 in Bangladesh. We, we were knocked out in the semi-final stages against the eventual champion Sri Lanka. In 2016, uh, I think we have as good a chance as any, uh, you know, T20, uh, it's anybody's game, whoever plays better on the day. So uh, we'd be looking forward to going out there and reclaiming the title that we won in 2012. Um, the team has not been selected as yet, obviously. I, I, I think I should be part of it, um, not preempting anything. But yeah, I think we have a good chance. Uh, we have international players who've excelled all parts of the world, Pollard, Gale, Bravo, and so on. So like I say, we've got a good chance as any, and hopefully we can go there and reclaim that title that we won in 2012. Well, best of luck to you, Samuel, and the West Indies. A few more questions around um, the sport of cricket uh, and how it is doing in the West Indies. Something that has always baffled me as a sports enthusiast is how do you play cricket on the beach? Can you please explain that phenomena to the people that are not part of the West Indies and how the ball bounces on sand? Yes, it's, it's, it's something that, that is unique to us in the Caribbean. And, um, and also, I would also say that it's something that you don't normally see anymore. Uh, when I was growing up, that was quite common, but the younger kids of the day, they don't seem to want to, to play cricket. They don't seem to want to be out in the sun. They're rather in the computer and on Facebook and social media and so on. But yeah, it's, it's a really nice experience. It's something that you've got to experience for yourself. I can't really explain it to you. It's something you've got to experience for yourself. That ball just kisses off that, that wet sand, and I think it develops you as a cricketer in terms of your hand-eye coordination, your eyesight and so on. And that is probably the reason why we were dominant 20, 30 years ago and people not doing it anymore, so, and we've seen the results, maybe. Well, perhaps going back to beach cricket is the clue for West Indies cricket to get back into the greats of, of the game. Obviously, we've seen some amazing uh, cricketing gifts that have been given to us by the West Indies cricket, such as Mr. Sir Brian Lara, uh, Vivian Richards, uh, Gary Sobers, uh, and the list can go on. And obviously, Samuel, you're part of that list for future generations to come to hold that title of being the number one bowler for the ICC for T20, which is probably the most emerging brand of cricket in the world. How do you feel about at the top of your game and being that role model for a lot of West Indian cricketers or cricketers globally, even including the ones in the U.S.? <coughs> well, I've always played cricket, uh, not for any sort of accolades or records. I've played cricket because of the love and the passion for it. It's really nice to be uh, recognized and rewarded and to, be, to have been number one in the world for, for quite a while. I'm actually ranked number two now. So it's nice to be there. It's nice for people to look up to me 
as a role model and try to emulate me. But at the end of the day, what I play cricket for is for the love and the passion and to make sure that, uh, you know, West Indies team always does the best that it can and to give off my best. And I think that's, um, that's why I play cricket, to always do my best. And whatever accolades and rewards that come with it, well, so be it. Uh, so, so Samuel, um, you mentioned uh, that uh, a lot of kids are stopped playing cricket on the beaches and they're into their social media and computers. Do you think there's a future for a uh, cricket video game to bring back kids to the game of cricket itself outdoors? What well, do you think about that? Well, maybe there's a market for it now, um, seeing that the, you know, the, the computer and the smartphones and so on take up a lot of kids' times. I think um, you know, if we can use that as, as a strategy to get them back on the field of play, I think anything that we can use in order to get kids back out playing the game, actual batting and bowling and having fun, I think you know, we can try any strategy at this present time. So uh, Samuel, I'm just going to do a quick rapid fire round, uh, perhaps ask uh, five quick questions that probably would have one word answers from your cricketing. So are you up for that? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I've never known you to back out <laughs> of a challenge. So here we go. Your favorite cricket moment? A winning T20 World Cup. Uh, your most difficult batsman that you bowl to? David Warner. Uh, your most favorite ball that you bowl out of your old the arsenal? Rowan. What's your favorite venue of playing cricket? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Awesome. I made, my, I made my debut here. That's awesome. So I'm going to wrap up this rapid fire because you made the right choices <laughs> by selecting uh, Broward County Regional Park. Well, for all the folks that are watching at home, we are in the presence of greatness. Uh, Samuel is obviously one of the highest rated cricketers in the world. Um, and the youngsters are out here in Fort Lauderdale. They're taking the benefit of uh, getting the coaching and the tips from one of the greatest bowlers, T20 bowlers in the world. For those of you who missed out, well, there will be another year next year in 2016 when we come back and Hopefully, Samuel, you'll be back here I look at Fort Lauderdale. Yes, I look forward to it. I think it's, uh, you know, like I say, there's a lot of potential out here, and hopefully I'll be back here next year. Well, I hope I'm never on the other end when you're bowling, and uh, I wish you all the best in the World Cup, and we'll all be looking forward. I'm sure you made a lot of new U.S. fans by virtue of this interview, and we'll be rooting for your success. Many thanks. Thanks a lot. Have a great evening, everybody.